Welcome to WP Easy Cart. In this video tutorial, uh, we're going to walk through how to set up shipping and various shipping rates that we offer within the software. In our previous articles, we've walked through setting up products and setting up taxes and getting your store ready with payment gateways. Uh, shipping is also one of those uh, major steps that everybody likes to configure uh, for their business and of course we can't have every shipping option within a, a cart but we do have a wide variety of solutions to kind of fit everybody's needs so you can kind of watch the video and see which one might fit best for you now just like with taxes uh, we talked about making sure that your products are taxable uh, the same holds true for shipping uh, just because we have all these demo products doesn't mean they're shippable and if we add them to the cart it may not actually calculate shipping at all because the products are not shippable so let's take a look at that let's go ahead and open up this first denim coat and we'll scroll down and look at shipping options and this is where you need to make sure that enable shipping is on if that's off it doesn't matter what you do you'll never get shipping costs to show up so it needs to be a shippable item the next thing I like to look at for products is making sure you have packaging now some live payment gateways through USPS or FedEx uh, will require weights and widths and what we do is we try to calculate the entire shopping cart total with weights and widths and how many the users ordered in a complex process and come up with a package um, and so make sure that you have somewhat accurate dimensions here uh, if you're working in you know pounds and, and inches then make sure you use pounds and inches not ounces or you know centimeters if you're working with uh, more metric numbers make sure you're using kilograms and centimeters in these values um, so that's the packaging side of it this part is to make sure it's a shippable item now just because you have a shippable item you may still want to exclude it from shipping calculations so maybe it's a free item <coughs> excuse me so we want to make sure that we go through and and know what some of these options at the product level are before we jump into shipping the other thing you want to do is if you have a one-time handling cost for example maybe it's a heavy item and you want to add an extra twenty five dollars to the shipping you can add it here this just gets put on top of the regular shipping costs that you calculate so I always recommend to start just with the basics we're gonna make sure we just have a shippable item with some weights and heights so this is for uh, an item here in our store this denim coat so we know that this is shippable I'm gonna go ahead and add one to the shopping cart I've got several items in my shopping cart okay now it's it's calculating a shipping rate of seven ninety nine so what we want to look at is how do you set up and configure those so let's go to settings and let's go to shipping settings within here you can actually enable and disable shipping across the entire store we can hide shipping on the first page which is the cart right here maybe you want to just show shipping after you get to the payment page you can disable that uh, we can add a global handling fee maybe you want to add ten dollars here you can do that and what happens is it just takes your standard shipping and adds ten dollars to it so that's kind of just a global handle fee if you need to add something there okay dimensions are you using standard or metric kind of what are you planning within the product level uh, you can add free local delivery we have a bunch of other options here um, as well that we can take a look at in a second now we go into live shipping um, you have Australia Post, Canada Post, DHL, FedEx, UPS, and way back up here at the top is USPS.
So those are our live carriers and you'll have to enter your credentials into all of these based on who you're using. Over here on the right, let's take a look. We have country list. Now, maybe you want to just ship to United States and Canada. Okay, you don't want to go over here and delete the countries inside of our country list. You want to just disable them so that if you ever do need to turn them back on, you can. Okay, and you can do that from the country list as well. Let's jump over here to countries and you can go through and let's just go ahead and say we're going to highlight everybody except for US and Canada okay and what you're doing here is you're actually going to be disabling countries in the pull down so certain countries will not show up here and you can really limit that down okay let's go back to our shipping settings and that would be this section here uh, we've got countries you can see they're all disabled now you can also do them here one at a time just depends on which which way you want to use it states you can do the same thing you can actually come over here to states uh, right here states and territories and you can actually disable them in bulk or you can disable here individually okay now we have shipping zones uh, shipping zones are one of the most misused things in EasyCart because people say, oh, I just want to ship to the lower 48. And so they turn this on and they do it at the shipping level and they think they're only going to ship here. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, you need to make sure you disable all countries and all other states if that's what you want. Shipping zones are for having unique rules appear in those locations. So if you want to have a shipping zone in the European countries and you want to have a different rate apply to them as opposed to everywhere else then you need to actually set that up and here we can actually create our own zones and you can create your own zone items so I could create my own and call it local shipping zone 1 Okay. and so I've created a new zone now I would have to come down here and say which country and state actually falls into my local shipping zone one so you can get really fine-grained detail we just created some of these as examples you don't have to stick with our shipping zones um, you can create your own uh, but you know I really encourage people to not use shipping zones in the beginning and I'll show you why. So this is kind of your setup. Now let's go to shipping rates. Shipping rates is where you actually pick your shipping method. So if you want to use in this first pull down live shipping rates, that's what you set up here. You'll select it and then you actually set up all your different rates. And you can see I'm not connected to any of my live carriers. I can go price triggers okay trigger rates all of these we've got weights quantities and percentage rates these are table based and you build them yourself so at price zero I'm gonna charge five dollars shipping maybe at price 50 of my cart I'm gonna charge ten dollars and I'm gonna add that and maybe at 150 I'm gonna charge twenty dollars for shipping so this is very straightforward shipping these are great to use because they're fast they're quick and uh, they don't go out to an API uh, and you know the user is going to get a shipping rate okay I ordered hundred and thirty five dollars so I have ten dollars shipping that means I fell into this shipping rate okay so this is where you would have uh, really consistent shipping is if you use price weight quantity or percentage based shipping shipping zones again this is where people make a mistake they say oh I just want that to be at the lower 48 well the problem is what happens if they're not in the lower 48 
there's no rule here for that user so they will actually see zero dollars for shipping and so you can really mess up using uh, shipping zones thinking that you're just going to ship to that area and that's not the case if you use a shipping zone and you set this up say only in Australia you need to go ahead and set up the same rule and make sure you cover every other zone across the country across the globe so that somebody sees a shipping rate um, if they don't match Australia so use them sparingly don't use them at all they're there though if we need some customization okay so those are trigger rates weights uh, they're all pretty much the same what do you want to trigger at a weight what do you want to trigger at a quantity you can set up a simple rate okay static method is their static rates if these are the three you're gonna create and these are the three prices that's what everybody sees period okay and if I go through and I continue to payment you will see that you see these three shipping rates period so again this is another great option because it doesn't use an API you see the exact rates that you create you can also have free shipping thresholds maybe if they cross a hundred dollars they get free shipping and so we can see that here if I refresh my page Okay, standard shipping is now free because I'm over a hundred dollars in the cart. So static is very simple. You can reorder which which order they fall into. Okay, now let's take a look at the more complex setup, which is live shipping rates. And live shipping rates require you to be connected, and that means we have to go back to our shipping settings and you have to actually fill in all the API details for a live shipper okay for example USPS I've got to put in an actual shipping rate uh, account you will need to contact them to see uh, exactly uh, what your uh, web account username is for example you can see this one didn't work <coughs> excuse me it came up with an error so you will need to make sure you get a live um, section there so let's take a look what it does if we put in a live one uh, let me jump back over here to our rates I went ahead and put in a live username and so I'm now connected I actually connected to USPS and when we go to the rates we go through and we enter all the rates that we want that live carrier to return now just because we enter the rates doesn't mean they'll actually work for every location so what we want you to do is enter as many as you can and when a user checks out it will see does ground retail priority express which ones of these will actually ship to that location because for example in my address we may not get second day air or we might not get priority and so even though you have five rates here it doesn't mean everybody's gonna see five rates so you wanna make sure you add a whole bunch and then let the API take care of it okay you can open up each of these you can give them custom labels you can uh, give them an override price maybe ground you wanna override that with ten dollars no matter what you can have a free shipping threshold so maybe a hundred dollars you want that to be free zones we do have zones again I highly recommend you don't use them here because the API is going to take care of the zone for you so again I would leave that off if you want to add more this is where you can come up here you can select USPS and this is all the different rates that they offer you can see I only have five of them out here okay I always recommend adding as many as you can to your system okay I'm gonna go ahead and add one here called all you can see it shows up here Okay, so I've connected and now I've added all the rates 
add as many as you can. I can add, go back and I can connect to FedEx or UPS. I can get multiple accounts. Let's go take a look at what it looks like on the address side of things. So a user goes through, starts checking out, they put in their address. We go to the payment page and you can see out of all of those it only returns these two live rates, Priority and Express. That depends on the package weight, the dimensions, the address location. There's a lot of things that go into whether or not it will show up. Now, if you only entered USPS Ground, this user would get free shipping because Ground is not acceptable in this location. So they're going to have to have some other uh, rates there. And that's why I highly recommend you add as many of these rates as you can so that you don't leave yourself exposed to having to ship something for free. Uh, it's better to have more than it is less in your shipping. So this is a good situation uh, where you can uh, pull in live rates. You can pull in from USPS, FedEx, UPS, all the major carriers. There's a lot of setup to them. You know, don't get frustrated as you go through and set these up. Uh, I always encourage people to, uh, you know, take their time, make sure it's working good, do a lot of testing with addresses to make sure you get what you want, and then you got a good shipping scenario. If you can get away without live rates, maybe you are uh, okay with doing some basic price tables. Uh, even better because it doesn't slow down as it has to go out and get shipping rates. So highly configurable though. Tables, we got static rates, we've got live rates through all the major carriers, uh, and it's all pretty much set up in our shipping and our shipping rates and our shipping settings panels right here. So we're going to take a look at our next video, uh, which is how do you go through and actually test your site. And we look forward to uh, seeing you there.